I can focus, I can work, I can function. It's like the end of the world to me. I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm getting better, but I'm just so forgetful now. Why? Hi everyone, welcome to Minglish. Let's get beauty. Well, first things first, subscribe. Because you do care about health and beauty, right? So simply subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And all this presented to you by Me Media. Do you easily forget things like walked into the kitchen but forgot what you were looking for? Beware! This could be neurocognitive disorder or dementia. And even at such a young age, it's still very possible. But don't be afraid, we'll be speaking to Dr. Wu today, who's here to help us. Let's welcome Dr. Wu! Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anna Wu. It's such a pleasure to be here. Dr. Wu, I've heard that some people are just more forgetful, but is it possible to be getting dementia or the neural cognitive disorder at such a young age? It is possible, even though the risk is lower, but it is definitely a possibility. Wow, you heard that? I think we need to find out more. Today's conversation. Oh. oh what are you looking for? I'm looking for my phone, Anna. Did you see it? Oh, let's see. Oh, wait, I think it's over here. <laughs> Oh, thank you! I've You're been welcome. looking for it all day. Oh, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you a secret. Actually, I broke up with my boyfriend last oh. month. And since then, I've been so absent-minded. I can focus. I can work. I can function. It's like the end of the world to me. I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm getting better. But I'm just so forgetful now. Why? Well, sometimes when you're very stressed or you're going through a lot, it can interfere with how your brain functions. But that's usually temporary and it goes away with time. Oh, what a relief to hear that. You know, I was so worried. I even asked Dr. Dini mm -hmm. to please go to the hospital with me later for a checkup. <laughs> you don't have to worry too much. Being forgetful and having dementia or a neurocognitive disorder is quite different. Today's topic. Hi, Dr. Wu. We do see a number of cases where young people are getting dementia. Can you briefly explain what is uh, dementia or the neurocognitive disorder? Sure. Um, so dementia is a collection of symptoms that can be caused by a variety of different diseases. And um, so it interferes with how people think, how people remember, how people see the world, and how people communicate. So it's not just being about being forgetful, it's a lot more than that. Wow! Mm -hmm. So how can we tell if a person has this? That's a very good question. So um, basically we diagnose a person with dementia when we see that there is a significant um, cognitive decline um, in the same person compared to how they were functioning before. And this um, impairment has to be in at least one of six cognitive uh, domains. And these domains are, are very different. So the first one is language and memory, which is the most relatable one. Everyone has bouts of forgetting things. So um, their memory changes can be very subtle in the beginning. For example, um, they might forget phone numbers or they might forget um, events that happened during the day or just things they had for breakfast. So really a prominent in recent memory, but they will remember, for example, who was their um, elementary school sweetheart and they will remember um, where they went to school, like long-term memory is preserved. So that's the first cognitive um, domain that's affected. Um, but also language can become impaired. So some people have trouble understanding people mm -hmm. and some other people have, um, some patients have trouble communicating uh, what they're thinking to the outside world. So it's like a, a bi-directional thing in terms of language. Wow, this is quite complicated. So what are the worsening signs? Right, so we mentioned two changes in cognitive domains and the third one is called executive functioning. So that's like a set of mental skills that allows us to plan our day and stay organized. So for example, patients might start having trouble uh, planning what to do throughout the day or they might have trouble planning a trip or just even maintaining like a paycheck book. That's one of them. 
And then the fourth one is complex attention. So complex attention means that uh, patients are having trouble concentrating. They become easily distracted and they might not be able to multitask. And the fifth dimension that's affected, it's called perceptual motor. So what that means is that, for example, you see a hairbrush and you don't know what is it for. You know that it's something that looks familiar, but you don't know to pick it up and brush your hair. So basically it means um, you don't know what you see. That's what uh, perceptual motor means. And the sixth domain that's affected is called social cognition. So as grown-ups, we know what's socially acceptable and what's not. But this filter kind of becomes a little permeable um, when you have dementia or neurocognitive disorder. So the patients become very honest, brutally honest, or they start doing things that are not so socially acceptable. And out of the six domains, you just need one of them, at least one impairment in one area, and that's how dementia or neurocognitive disorder is diagnosed. Today's conclusion. So which age group is the most vulnerable? Because we call this the old timers disease, but we do see cases of young people. Hmm. That's a very good question. So usually we associate neurocognitive disorder with patients who are a little bit older. So usually it's above the age of 65 years old. But um, so there's this uh, cutoff and it's somewhat arbitrary at the age of 45. So if you're diagnosed with dementia or neurocognitive disorder before the age of 45, then we call that early onset dementia. Like a 30 something years old? That's so young. I mean, we are just starting a new chapter in our life. People are just getting married or having kids. Are there any preventions or how about treatments? That's a really good question too. So there are many treatment options available in terms of drugs and pharmacotherapy, but what these drugs do is they slow the progression of the disease without really curing it or terminating it. So I, in my opinion, the best way to approach or tackle this problem is to prevent it. And in terms of prevention, there are a number of things that you can do, and they all have to do with like a healthy lifestyle. For example, first, you can eat a healthy diet. Every doctor says that, right? Uh, yes, <laughs> healthy diet. A healthy diet, but that's very important because if you're eating a lot of sugary foods or fried foods or just um, foods that promote inflammation in the body, what it does is that um, your body goes into a pro-inflammatory state. And that causes a lot of problems because it gives you chronic medical conditions like hypertension, like blood sugar problems, diabetes, or heart problems. And all of that can contribute to the development of dementia or neurocognitive disorder. So eating healthy, lots of green um, vegetables and just leafy greens, that's very important. Um, the second thing that's very important is exercise. Yeah, because um, exercise on the one hand can help you de-stress, and stress is bad for you because again, it contributes to um, adding uh, inflammation and oxidative stress in our body. So you want to de-stress any way possible. Exercise is a really good option. And the second part is that exercise also keeps your blood vessels, your circulatory system very healthy. And that's very important because um, if you have like a good circulatory system, you can get rid of the toxins that build up in your brain and that cause dementia. And the third thing that you can do is um, you can get a good night's rest. That's super important as well. So well, what happens is that every day we're uh, building up lots of protein in our brain and we call that amyloid plaques. And when that builds up a lot, you get dementia or neurocognitive disorder. So everybody builds up this protein, but the brain is very um, smart and uh, we have the system called the glymphatic system and it clears up this protein buildup and it only does it during sleep. So if, not, if you're not getting enough hours of sleep or you're not sleeping well, then you're more prone to developing dementia. And the fourth one, which I think is vital and imperative is um, being open-minded and willing to put yourself to learn more things and being very flexible. Mm -hmm. So then the brain considers that uh, something very intellectually stimulating. But if you're very stubborn and you're always doing the same things and you never learn things, then the brain finds that very boring and then it's easier for you to um, develop symptoms of dementia or co neurocognitive disorder. Wow, sounds like a healthy eating, regular exercise is really necessary. Yeah, you know, I actually keep my brain really active. I read a lot of Facebook. Oh, well, that's one way to go over here. How about you try this book and you, you use a little bit less of the Facebook. <laughs> it, this can be very intellectually stimulating for your brain. Thank you, Anna. Let me 
letting me start with this today. You're very welcome. Today's keywords. Dementia. Dementia. Neurocognitive disorder. Neurocognitive disorder. Executive functioning. Executive functioning. Memory. Memory. Emotions. Emotions. Social cognition. Social cognition. Stress. Stress. Today's idiom. To have a memory of a goldfish. To have the memory of a goldfish. This is an expression that refers to people who are often forgetful. Well, it's a great pleasure having Dr. Wu today. And thanks to her, do you have one of these domains? Does that apply to you? Hopefully not. And if you have forgotten, watch again. See you next time. Bye bye. If you liked our video, please hit the button on the left and subscribe to our channel. Okay. 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 Okay.